Hello everyone and welcome back to Destiny. Eater of Worlds is Leviathan's first raid lair. You may have heard at this point that it's a fairly short encounter, after all that is what Bungie did lead us to expect, and I have to say the encounters are very creative and super fun. If you have the ability to do so, I recommend going into the raid blind. It was really fun to discover how to defeat this raid on our own over the course of a few hours. So if you want to preserve that experience, you might want to stop watching. This video is a comprehensive guide on the entirety of Eater of Worlds. If you need help on a specific encounter, I'll go ahead and leave timestamps down below. Anyways, without further ado, let's jump into it. Alright, so the first section is a jumping puzzle. You essentially have to jump on these platforms to get the one in front of it to spawn. The trick is, you can only have one person on each of the platforms at a time. If more than one person gets on a platform, they will all collapse. So essentially, you're going to need to go in an order. So establish an order between 1 and 6, and make sure only one person is on a platform at a time. Then simply move forward, keeping track of the person that you're behind. Just basically follow the leader. Don't try to do anything fancy. And try not to panic. If your platform turns red, you have more time on it than you might think. There's four of these sections, and they get less and less linear as you go, so just coordinate with your team and make sure you move as quick as possible. The good news is you only need three to four people to complete each section, and then you essentially create a checkpoint where all of the previous platforms will spawn automatically. When you get to the other side of the room, there's going to be a few waves of Cabal that you'll have to defeat in order to progress. The battle ends with six Colossus dropping in for you to finish off. Upon completion, you will be rewarded with the first chest. This is very much like the Castellum chest in that it gives you the powerful engram, your shaders, and tokens. When you're finished, you're good to drop down the hatch. The next area includes pistons that create a shockwave. To get through the room, you have to run to protective walls before the pistons fire. If you're caught outside of cover, you instantly die. So make your way to the protective covers and stay behind the yellow line. Simply make your way along the pipe and you'll find a natural exit. In the next section is where you'll find your first encounter. And in typical Bungie fashion, the entrance to the area is absolutely insane. You'll find yourself falling relatively slowly, but still enough to kill you, so try your best to dodge as much as you can. Also, these rings here are most likely what you need to go through to activate a secret chest. I've yet to try it on my own, but it definitely seems to be related to that for those who have found it. And from what I understand, the chest is simply like an underbelly chest. It has a chance of dropping an exotic, at least a legendary, and of course, tokens. Make your way lower, getting closer and closer to a glowing structure. So this space is essentially a giant triangle. On one side, you'll have a void plate. On the second side, you'll have a solar plate. And on the third side, you'll have an arc plate. Think of these as ovens that you'll use to cook Vex heads. Yeah, you heard that right. There's going to be Vex craniums that spawn around the map. Throughout the encounter, you'll have to grab one of the craniums and take them to the plate that you need. Once you place it inside of a node, a second cranium will be spawning in the same area. There are six total craniums that can exist at any one time. Once a cranium is energized or cooked, you can then use it to shoot 40 rounds of a laser beam. Once you shoot all the lasers, the cranium will despawn, spawning a brand new fresh cranium for you to energize. The number one tip I'm going to give you right off the bat is that don't leave any cranium ammo in the cranium. Go ahead and expend any extra that you have. I would recommend using it to help take out those minotaurs. This will make a little bit more sense in a moment as we dive into the objective of the first encounter. We essentially have a giant husk that we have to destroy to reveal the boss inside. This is going to be the first phase. This is how I recommend starting it. As soon as you grab the first cranium, the encounter begins. You will have ads spawning all over the map close to the plates. Essentially, you're going to need to split off in teams of two. Two on Solar, two on Arc, and two on Void. I recommend having one person in each team just focus on ads and having the second person be the runner. I highly recommend the three ad people not talk at all so that the three runners can communicate clearly and see which craniums we need energized. So to remove a shield, three mines will spawn on each of the six sides. You have two sets that are facing solar, two sets that are facing arc, and two that are facing void. 
The mines appear as elemental crystals sticking out of the husk. When the set of three mines appear on your side, the runner for that side should call out what is needed, and then the other runners will cook accordingly. So in this example, we have two solar mines and one void. So I would call out two solar, one void on the solar side. Then the runners will cook the right craniums. The void runner will go ahead and cook the void cranium, but then the arc runner will go ahead and grab a cranium and bring it over to the solar side so we have two craniums. The mines will detonate, wiping the team if you wait too long, so as soon as you can, go ahead and take out the mines. Keep in mind that there is only enough ammo in each of the craniums to take out one single mine. So if you have multiple of the same element, you'll need to be cooking multiple craniums. Once you take out all three of the mines on one side of the husk, that section of the husk will disappear. Once you've taken out all six sections, that's it. The first part of the encounter is over. Go ahead and make your way over to the void plate to pick up your loot. I was awarded the new chess piece and three tokens. Now we have the raid's final encounter, your battle with Argos. For this battle, you're going to have to deactivate his shield in order to do damage to him. You're going to have four opportunities to deliver damage. And for the most part, you're going to be using the exact same mechanics as you did the first time around. Except this time, everyone's a runner. You're going to need to coordinate with the rest of your team and see exactly where the craniums are needed. Once you begin the encounter, you're going to see three elemental sparks around the shield. There will be one to the left, one to the right, and one on top. The one on top is slightly leaning towards the side you need. To deactivate the shield, you have to continue to shoot the elemental spark with your cranium until you lead all three sparks at the same time into the gate. Once the shield is down, you'll be able to do damage to him. This is how my team and I got it done. At first, you need to coordinate which of the craniums you're going to need corresponding to the sparks around the shield. Then you're going to want to call out to your team which side it's facing. Again, it's going to be facing the side which has the gate right in the middle. Again, you'll have a left side, a right side, and a top side spark with the top side spark slightly leaning towards the side he's going to be facing. So we immediately began to cook the required craniums. In this case, we have two arc and one void. While those are cooking, the other three people need to grab all of the other craniums and take them to the side where he's going to be facing. In this case, it happened to be solar. So you're going to want to plant all of the solar craniums on this side, not because you'll need them for a mechanic, but because it's an excellent source of DPS. We realize that not only do they do a ton of damage, but it's almost required to be able to do enough damage to him. As soon as his shield disappears, unload. Now he's going to be throwing a couple things at you. He has these sort of harpy missiles, and then as you can see in front of me, he throws a pyramid at you that will entrap you and begin to float you away. You're completely disabled while inside the pyramid, but your teammates can shoot it off. Once he restores his shield, that damage rotation is complete. Now he does have a punishment mechanic, and that mechanic involves him summoning a series of platforms and beginning to charge up a void energy ball. At this point, you all need to focus and stun him. He has six crit spots, one on his left arm, one in his right arm, two on his back, and two on the top of his head. These are designated by glowing white panels that take critical damage. For this first rotation, we went with his arms. You need to focus the arms all at once. You can't split apart. If you let up damage even for a little bit, that section will be completely healed. So you have to absolutely nuke each section. Each section will turn red and then explode. Once we took out two of the crit spots, the entire encounter was set. And for my team, it took four damage phases. Now when it comes to damage, you want to give it everything you've got. Supers do really well, especially Golden Gun with Celestial Nighthawk. Also, as I mentioned, the craniums left behind are an excellent source of DPS, so definitely don't forget about those. Also, you can shoot the pyramids on his way over to you, but as you can see here, it is very easy to get trapped in them, and the only way to get out of it is to have your teammates shoot it off. Now, between the point when his shield closes up and the platforms appear, there seems to be enough time to get in a second damage rotation. The sparks reappear and the craniums respawn. In my first playthrough, we didn't have enough time to cook new craniums because the craniums despawn as soon as the platforms appear. I'll have to explore this a little bit more, but definitely leave it in the comments below if you were able to get a second damage phase in a single rotation. But anyways, for the second punishment mechanic, we went to his back and concentrated on the left side and then the right. Once he is stunned again, the third rotation begins. 
Again, as a tip, I recommend having a countdown to when he starts shooting and be sure to use any spare craniums you have and place them all as spares on the plate for extra DPS. After the third damage phase, you're going to want to climb up pretty high up. I actually recommend getting to the top level if you can manage it. And that's mainly because the final two crit spots are on the top of his head. Once you get to the top, you're going to want to rotate towards the front of him so you can get a better shot. This will also allow you to move over to the right side crit spot a little bit quicker. Now again, since there are only three sets of crit spots, you are only afforded four damage phases. If you don't get him after four, you won't be able to stun him the final time he charges up, which means he will wipe your team. This also happens to coincide with his rage timer, so if you don't get him in four rotations, you're pretty much going to be dead either way. Again, if you've been doing 25% or more damage per rotation, you should be okay. We did almost exactly 25 per rotation. It was very close. As you can see, we even triggered the Enrage timer. But luckily, he doesn't have a 5% final stand type situation, so once you take out his health, the encounter is over. You are immediately rewarded with tokens and the Emperor's Envy Emblem. You are then yet again teleported over to the Callus Robot Room where you can claim your final chest. It appears that each of the chests will guarantee you a loot drop. It seems like you will get an armor piece from the first chest and a weapon in the second. The weapon I happen to get is the Zenith of Your Kind shotgun. It is an awesome shotgun because it's just like the Hawthorne's Field Fort shotgun, which features full auto, and this weapon also happens to have auto-loading holster, which is definitely going to come super handy in future runs of this encounter. I have to say, overall, I'm pretty happy with the way this raid layer turned out. It is a little bit shorter than I would have preferred. I would have loved to have maybe like a mini boss before Argon, but I have to say I can't complain. If future raid layers are like this, then this can be something that you can run alongside Leviathan in a single sitting. Anyways, I hope you find this guide useful. I'm not really sure how it could have made it any shorter. It's very complex, but luckily it's very easy to do once you get the hang of it. Also, if you have any best practices or tips, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe for more Destiny content. And I will see you all next time.